Welcome viewers. This is Literary Goa, the program that looks at books and authors from Goa. Today we have someone who's a bit different because he's a publisher. But before we that start that story, we'll talk about Leonard Fernandez's past where he was an engineer who passed out from the Goa Engineering College in 1997, Mechanical Stream. From mechanical at GEC Leonard to here is a long distance. How did you, how did that journey happen? Okay, thank you for having me here, first of all. Um, so, I graduated in 1997, and then uh, the search for jobs. As an engineer? As an engineer. Didn't get me very far in mechanical engineering, so I, I got into computer programming. And uh, as part of that, I went to the US. I was there till 2005. Ohio? I did, I did my MBA at Ohio State University. And during the MBA program, I realized the market for used books that existed in the U.S. But actually, it's something very brave that you did because uh, both you and your wife, Queenie Rodriguez, moved back to Goa. Yeah, so, uh, so following that, uh, I finished my MBA in 2004. In 2005, we decided to move back to Goa. And primarily, we decided to set up a portal for used books where used books could be traded because I had seen how the market works in the U.S. And we called it dog ears, etc. because it, it related to used books and dog-eared books. So that's, uh, that's how dog ears, etc. came into Used books had a, has the dog-eared kind of nature and yes. that's an innovative yeah, name. Yeah. So yeah. that's why we called it dog-eared books. And uh, primarily the book, the, the website was supposed to facilitate trade of used books, peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, it was not... Uh, it was now what is called a marketplace, but at that point we, we envisaged it as a peer-to-peer -peer book selling platform. So Goa was a bit unprepared for that when you all were ready. Was it an idea before its time? Yeah, it was an idea much before its time and even now because people are very reluctant to part with their books. So textbooks, yes, but textbooks become obsolete within a few okay. years. So, okay. so but in the West, it works. It works. It works very well. Very well. And most of because books are expensive to begin with, so uh, people uh, trade use books a lot. I actually quite admire your bravery and your persistence because from a well-paying field like computer sciences, particularly then, and management in your wife's case, you all moved down to books. Yeah. But of course, we'll talk more about that journey as we go along and it'll emerge. So, so from there, the next stop was, if I understand right, Cinnamon Teal. Yeah. So, um, Queenie is actually an uh, MA in economics. Gokhale? Uh, at Gokhale Institute. So, between us, we set up Dogs, etc., which was the bookshop. And then we realized that there are people who are asking us to publish their books. Now, there were, you, you know the NBD statistics, right? 16,000 publishers and whatnot. National Book Trust? Uh, National Book Trust statistics. Okay. So, we were wondering why another book publisher is required and what, what difference will that book publisher make? So, we were researching the internet and we realized, we saw this thing about self-publishing. It was just uh, starting, 2006, 2007, 2005? B2B self-publishing was already there in India, but B2C wasn't there. Business to consumer. Business to consumer. Where uh, somebody like you and me could go and say, I want okay. to publish my book. Uh, business to business was already there. So businesses who wanted to publish books, there was a, so there was a service for them. And we set up the first B2C self-publishing set up in India. You mean you were before Poti.com and a whole yeah. lot of others? So we set up in Oct October 2006. I see. Poti set up in... February 2007. Interesting, very interesting. Of course, I know that in any interview that there is on uh, self-publishing, on publishing, alternative modes of publishing, Cinnamon Teal is most likely to be interviewed na nationwide in that sense, no? Yeah, so, and, and it was a lot about educating the consumer at that point because nobody understood what self-publishing was. Uh, it's a model in which the author pays for publishing rather than what is called as traditional publishing, which the yeah. publisher puts their money in. So it's easy to publish, but there is a certain amount of work the author has to commit himself or herself to, to distribute and to make the book notes available. Yeah, and uh, going in, we were, we were very careful to make sure that the integrity of the book is not tampered with. So even so, if the author is paying, you're not going to publish rubbish? I'm not going to publish rubbish. I'm not going to publish without editing. I'm not going to put clip art on the cover and say that's a cover. Okay. So all those aspects of the book I want, I want that the author should 
remain committed to. Okay. But the main difference is that the author is putting his money into his own books. So, uh, how many books so far? So, uh, roughly around, say roughly around 10 to 15 books a month. Total? Uh, so, maybe 120 books wow. a year. It's yeah. about 10 years now. So That's a lot. That's a lot. But of course, the reader, the viewer needs to understand that uh, all these books may not be large edition. They could be small editions also. So What's the, the average print run you could say is about 100. And the smallest print run? The small. The smallest is where we have directly put it online and said let the market order. Okay. So maybe 50 to okay. 60. Okay. But we have printed even 3,000. I see. Wow. wow. So, so, but initially when self-publishing came, it was not about books for public consumption. It yeah. was books for private consumption. So for example, family histories family geneal genealogy. Or if your mother is celebrating her 98th birthday and you want to put together all her recipes yeah. and, and gift it those, to Those were the books that initially used to come. I see. Now with this whole, uh, uh, people have started earning money and you know, a book is a way of showing that you have arrived. <laughs> So not necessarily the best books, but people come and say, I want this book to be published. What are the pros and cons of uh, print on demand versus, uh, you know, commercial publishing? Of course, both have their pluses and no, minuses, print, no print doubt. on demand is yet another model okay. where, you, where you say that I won't print books in advance. I will print books only when they are demanded, yeah. so yeah. when there's a sale. It is what uh, uh, Dell's negative inventory, Dell computers yeah. had come with this negative inventory that I will put together the computer after the order comes. Yeah, okay, but without so, getting too, too so, technical. So the book is printed after the yeah. order is placed. Yeah. Yeah. So what that means is that it's not, it cannot go onto a shelf. Yeah. Or it can, you know, because it can only go onto an online store. Self-publishing versus traditional publishing, pros and cons? Uh, main con is that it does not have the marketing backup of a hmm. good publisher. But you can, the entry barriers are very low. Entry barriers are very low. So you can, uh, so if you get a book edited by a good editor yeah. and if you can get your friend to design a good cover, then basically what you're printing, uh, paying for is only the print run. And yeah. if you put it on print on demand, you're not even paying, paying for the for print that. run because the consumer is paying for the... And you don't have to think in terms of a thousand or five hundred copies, you can... You don't, you don't have to think in terms mm. of in it, maybe ten copies. Of it. That's because of the change in technology? Yeah. So that, that technology is still evolving. Okay. So you now the minimum print run is two. I so, see. You know. I see two two I books two copies, two of, copies a book. of a book. Of course, the per per copy cost will come per high. Per copy cost is high. But it's not like you have the stock. But the total cost of ownership is low Correct. because you don't have to pay for fifty uh, for a thousand copies. Correct. So yeah. So so in that sense, tell us something about the Goa books that you brought out through this model. I know that you all have brought out some very interesting and uh, prestigious books including uh, Art the Lingua Canary. Yeah. So, so Art the Lingua Canary is actually where we put our own money. It was not a self-published book. Yeah. Uh, we realized that uh, prior to the Krista Puran being published in 1619, uh, Father Thomas Stevens had published a book of Konkani grammar I see. for the uh, Roman script reading peoples, okay. where the missionaries would then acquaint themselves with the uh, local language through a medium. So it is in, it is Konkani grammar explained in Portuguese. I see. And this was uh, in that type, so it's not. Yeah. And uh, we realized that a copy existed in uh, SOAS, um, School of Oriental and African Studies UK. in UK. And we approached them and asked them, can we do a facsimile copy? You mean to say that between then and your time, it was not reprinted at all? It was not reprinted and it was not in Goa. Not available? It was not available in Goa, although it's such a... So when uh, Dr. Madhavi Sardesai passed away recently, she saw it, she realized that it's a, it's a, it's a document of the linguistic evol evolution of the Konkani language, because how it was studied then and how it is studied now. Frozen in time kind Frozen of. Frozen no? in time kind of. So it was a very important document to have. Okay. And uh, we are glad we brought out that book. Very interesting. Apart from that, I also remember coming for the launch of the book of the firing in Margao. Yeah, that is again a book we brought 
ourselves. Which was this, just for some way of background, there was this dispute between two sections of Goans who were fighting over party politics. So it depends on whom you listen to. Okay, you know. okay. there so are many versions there of this story. versions of the story. And, one and there was a Portuguese firing and 21 guys were 21 killed. 21 guys were killed. So to put it into context, this is before Jalan Bagh. And yeah. So, uh, 1891? 1890, 21st September, 1890. Okay, okay. So and the bullet holes are still there in the house in, in Margao, no? Yeah. If, you're, if you're going via the church it's square. Opposite, it's adjacent to the Holy Spirit Church. Yeah. And we realized that such an, it's not that it was not documented. Yeah. For example, uh, Maria Aurora Kuto's book, uh, Goa Daughter Story, has it. Yeah. Uh, and there are many... Uh, Talking about it. Yeah. But, but there was never a book dedicated to it. So and this was in graphic novel form, in comic form, what we would call form. So that's again something that we brought in house. We brought it out in house. Some other Goa books, can you tell us? Uh, about? We also published uh, Father Velinkar's two books. Uh, on history of Goa. History Father Velinkar is this Jesuit scholar based in, uh, based in St. Xavier's, Saint Xavier's Bombay. Yeah. Bombay. And then we brought uh, Teresa Albuquerque's yeah. uh, collection of articles yeah. 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 on yeah. the Portuguese yeah. influence in Basin, right. Goa. Right. And um, Father uh, Nasiment J. Mendonca's. Uh, yeah, his um, um, dictionary. Yeah, his uh, listing, listing, listing of priests, very, his, very encyclopedic, very fat, thick yeah, volume. Of the Taluka. Two volumes or one was it? One volume. One volume. One volume. One volume. One volume. And uh, then uh, uh, Tenzin um, Rodriguez, Rodriguez. He brought out his uh, c a compilation of his father's writings. Uh, Tenzing Rodriguez's father is Professor L.A. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah, Ludin Rodriguez, who was very prominent as a professor of Dempe College yes. and uh, also a great scholar of Konkani yeah. language. Many of these unsung people who otherwise would not get a chance to be published or for their works to be known. I remember yeah. that's a very nice volume costing just 200, 200. That rupees was, uh, each. That was, I think, uh, two volumes. Supported by the director okay. of. Arts and culture? No, no official right. language. Official languages. Whatever, whatever. So yeah, so so bringing together different resources and putting together a book, good book. Yeah. Since we are talking economics at this point, uh, would it be right to say that there is pressure on bringing out a book in Goa at this point? If so, why? Is it because of the small market? Some people disagree with me on my pet theory. Um, what's your pet theory? that that uh, the market is small so you know books traditional publishing needs 500 1000 copies yeah so yeah so that is one way of looking at it and i think so pod helps that print on, print on demand helps that you put out 50 copies you say okay that has sold out let me bring another 50 copies another way of looking at it is looking at the diaspora and saying okay if this book really wants to resonate with goa it might resonate with the diaspora also and bringing out a larger print run a third way could be to build a market locally in that sense, no, with time. Yeah, but, but, it's but it take depends a on, which the, on the book that you're bringing. So if it's a fiction based in Goa, maybe you'll get a bigger market for it rather than a niche history book, which anyway, social sciences have a small audience. Yeah. Yeah. So while we are on that point, what are the kinds of books you prefer to publish? Which are the books that sell? I know you and me have the shared bias that poetry doesn't sell. <laughs> and poets are going to get angry with us for saying it, but that's how we look at it. Yeah. Uh, poetry doesn't sell, uh, but even if you look at the bigger publishers, they don't print more than 750,000 copies of poetry. So maybe an Asif Karimboy or a Ranjit Hoskote will sell more than that. Yeah. But even the others, very few copies. Um, there are no favorite books, but if I were putting my money on a book, it would be mostly history of some historical aspect I of see. Go. What is missing, and this is something you might agree with, is people coming to Goa and saying, can I have a history of Goa and there's no True. book. True. Everyone is asking for that. Students that, asking for it. There is one book that Director of Official Languages published by Olivino Gomes called uh -huh. Hist Concise History of Goa, which is out of print again. So there's no way of bringing it back unless the, yeah. I don't know whom the rights lie with. But we need a history of Goa. That's true. We need something At a glance. to put it. You're right, I absolutely agree with you. And if you just joined us, viewers, we are talking to Leonard Fernandez, who is involved, who is the founder, co-founder of Dog Ears ETC, Cinnamon Teal, and Publishing Next, which we are going to talk about next. Mm. But uh, yeah, this is all about books, and you know, we have a lot to learn, and uh, I am sure that people would be surprised at the large number of even Goa-related books which are there, which you br brought out, which they are not, you know, aware of in that sense. Yeah. But um, Having said that, tell us about Publishing Next, which is your third baby. 
So, publishing next was, uh, so in uh, 2000, um, in 2010, Cinnamon Teal won the Young Creative Entrepreneur Award. You won it? Okay. We won it, but yeah, basically we pitched Cinnamon Teal okay. as a business. Okay. So, it is given okay. to a business. And Cinnamon Teal is jointly run by you and your wife Queenie? Queenie. Apart from the staff, but you all yeah. are the founders. So, yeah, we are the founders. Co-founders. Co Co-founders. And, Co uh, basically, the only constants in that. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so uh, in 2010 we got that award, which was a British Council Award for uh, creative businesses. Yeah. yeah, young creative. Young creative businesses. And uh, as part of that award, uh, they allowed us, uh, they gave us pass to the London Book Fair. Okay. And we realized how little is known, how little information about the publishing industry is created in India. So if you want to learn about publishing, there's really no place okay. to go. There is no books, there is no documentation of any kind. And in those days there used to be one one uh, seminar, uh, one uh, conference called Tools of Change. I see. Which was held by the O'Reilly Books. In, in, in Britain, New York, US, US. New York. They, they have folded up since then, but basically it was to prepare publishers for what the future lies for I them. see. So that's why when we realized, when we, we said, okay, let's have a Tools of Change here in India, and we called it Publishing Next because what is the next about okay. publishing? And we had our first edition in 2011. At International Center Goa. International Center Goa. We had about 30 speakers. We had about 50 others. So we had a crowd of about 80 people. And we realized soon then that, you know, there are many publishers who are not even in the present. Forget about the future. So we had to kind of reconfigure Publishing okay. Next uh, to be about explaining what the future is and what and what the present is also, how things are done, what are the best practices, things like that. So, to put it briefly, it has been this uh, conference which is held for the last eight years, mostly in Goa, except once or twice maybe outside. Once in Kochi. Once in Kochi, once, yeah. Once in Delhi. Delhi. Mm. And uh, it attracts publishers from across the country, you know. Yeah. So, I'm quite gung-ho about it and those who have read my pieces would know that I'm very upbeat, although in a way we are, we are business rivals in that yeah. sense, but I think it's... Uh, it's a very innovative uh, experiment and really great that you've managed to keep it going all these years. What's the response like to it? The response is good, meaning there are people who come in and say, okay, this has taught me about publishing. You get big names coming in. I get big names coming in as speakers. So It's surprising, no, for them to come to a small place like Goa and uh, spend three days here, three if not. Yeah, but, but I think now, so when we started, there was one more, uh, there was Global Local, which was I a see. German book office thing. We have kind of uh, moved into another space, which is children's publishing. Okay. So, f for a long time, we were the only one. Then Jaipur Bookmark has its Jaipur uh, Literature Festival has a similar thing called okay. Jaipur Bookmark. Okay. But to get publishers to come only for a conference yeah. on publishing is not easy. Is not easy. So, in that sense, we have managed to do that, and it's very intense. You've been there. Yeah. It's only we discuss all aspects of publishing, and it's very serious. No, people don't come here for a picnic like the other conferences tend to end yeah, up. Yeah, we don't. I don't think they even get time for a picnic. Like, you know. so, so they pay their gate money. They come in. They come in. Of course, the biggest struggle to keep it going has been to get sp uh, support and sponsors, and you know because it's a costly affair. Yeah. No, you have to get play for the plane. So, so for, for, for the for the speakers, we pay their travel and yeah. stay. Yeah. So that costs, then, and then the. Uh, so this year we had it for four days. Yeah. So those costs of land. And of this year there were sessions dealing with what? There were sessions. So we have three parts. We have master classes where we teach them basics. So we taught them basics about editing, production and marketing. Yeah. Then we have workshops. So we had the author contract explained and we had book reviewing explained and things like that. And then we have panel discussions. So we had uh, book retail and self-publishing and translations. And those aspects explained. It's pretty amazing, no? In spite of there being so so much publishing happening in India, there is still need to learn at places. Yeah, like this. because many publishers learn on the job, as it were. You know, so they might not be aware that, for example, there are there need to be contracts between authors and publishers, or that there need to be contracts between, or the whole copyright that you yeah. just cannot take something from Google and put it on your yeah. cover things like that. They are not things that they uh, purposefully uh, ignore. ignore, 
These are things they are just not aware they of. They are not aware of. And uh, they might get into legal issues and things like that. It's better that they understand those points. You know, Leonard, uh, you know my perspective on this. I'm also gung-ho about Goa being the starting point of printing in Asia, mm -hmm. in the Gutenberg press sense, yeah. in 1556. Then we went through many phases and we, uh, you know, went down and became almost next to nothing. Now we seem to be picking up. Having said all that, what do you see as the role for Goa in the world of printing publishing? It's a tiny part of India. It's a tiny, I mean, almost 1,000th part of India. What role do you see playing? Of course, you have already started this national level conference. No, but I think because of our small market, there are things we can try. Like? Know? Like translations. I think Konkani is the most under-translated language. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I don't know about okay. all the languages, but I think, I think there's a lot of material in Konkani that can be brought into I see. English. And because of our small market, what you see I as see. a negative, uh, I think that it's easy to experiment with. Fewer numbers of fewer copies, numbers so yeah. Of copies so it won't be a big mistake, so even if it's a mistake, yeah. yeah. I think what you're doing with the Wikipedia is also hmm. is a wonderful initiative. Uh, but uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily see uh, the small size as a negative. The Goa Art and Literature Festival. We are trying to have. We had publishing sessions there last year. We're trying to have more. I this see. Year. I think uh, all these initiatives need to come together and. There is something sort of happening, synergy. but just getting it together yeah, is a getting challenge. Getting it together is a challenge. Also, I think the Goa book market is underserved. Uh, you and I can count how many bookstores are there in Goa, and they are all on the coastal belt. Uh, I think. How many libraries also are there? How many libraries are there? Of we course, need more. We need more. We know, need on paper. More. There are twelve libraries. It's 136 if you count the small ones. No, no, also. I'm talking about the okay. Goa, Goa, Goa libraries. Um, the uh, state central state. libraries are managed. 12 are there. At 12 the district being, level, Talukas. Yeah, Talukas. Level. But still, Mopsa doesn't have one, and they are going to have one, and Vasco doesn't have one. And so, libraries are not. And, and how many of these libraries actually see footfalls yeah. as yeah. libraries? Or they're just, you know, they're mm. because. We have a yeah, good central library and a good one in Navili, but apart from yeah. that, it's like a desert, no? In that yeah. sense. So I think uh, book selling. So that's what when when we say it's a small market. See, for example, uh, I, ju I was just talking to someone the other day who said, "Let me have a music program in your bookshop," and I said, "Why not?" And she said, "Will you have a ticket?" And I said, "Why not?" And do will they come? We don't know whether they'll come because they never never had one before. So we don't know whether people will actually buy books if they get access to books, you know. What because I like when we go to bookshop, when we go to schools, we hardly come back disappointed. Two points before we so. before we run out of time. One, what I like about your bookshop is that it is a, a space for many things. Yeah. Meetings, I, film shows. It's very small place, you know that. Uh, in the heart of Margao, but on the ground floor, nice location. Yeah. And uh, you are open to anyone coming and organizing anything loosely related to the word. Yeah, like now we're having a music session. Written, spoken, yeah. sung word, whatever. Sung word, yeah. <laughs> and secondly, your ex your experience of taking books to uh, schools and books villages. To schools and villages. Tell and, us. And it's very, it's been very good. I see. Uh, students want to take one book at least home. I see. So the low prices of NBT, CBT books helps. And it is a price sensitive economy. We it need. It's a price to. sensitive economy, and uh, when you're talking about migrant children, yeah, who've got first. In the, in the family, first there's a first, first access yeah. to books. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can't deny them yeah. a book. You know? yeah. So that aspect, uh, experience has been very good. Schools are open to books. Libraries are open to books. I you see. just need the funds. You just need one slide. So th that's what I'm wondering, whether people are not buying more books because they don't have access to books. And maybe, yeah, true. And also uh, better government policies, hopefully. No? Yeah. In the sense that better library management, better library funds things like that. From here, where next? What are your plans? I think we'll just consolidate what we okay. have rather than get into new things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because like you mentioned, eight, eight editions are publishing next and yeah. there are still people who haven't heard about it. And then there's a book selling which we really want to build upon. I'm really grateful to you for coming here, Leonard, and spending your time. And uh, you know, I think what you've done is really innovative because not only you all chose to give up, you know, the life in the West and come back to Goa, but take on a very difficult field at that. You know, and I think uh, in a way you all are role models to other youngsters who are going there. It's not easy, no doubt about it. Let's not, you know, pretend that it's going to be easy or it's fast or, you know, 
it's going to be a cakewalk. But it's it's something that you'll have challenge you'll have taken up, and I'm really looking forward to seeing more and more of you in the news and outside, yeah. and in the printed world. Yeah. Thanks for coming here. Thank you very much.